So, we know that sig figs are all about determining how accurate a number really is. Communicating. So, you have the rules above. Now, if you just like memorizing rules, that's fine. You've got what you need. Personally, I don't like to memorize the rules like that. I like to remember things by making sense of them. So, here's a different way to understand or remember sig fig rules. To better understand these rules, let's consider that they are a way of trying to determine what a person out there somewhere wrote down must have meant with their number. Keeping this in mind, let's consider the first rule as the main one. If they wrote down a number other than zero, there must have been some reason for this digit. That is, it must be significant. It must have mattered to the person who wrote it down. They must have been telling you something with that digit. You don't just randomly write down a 2 or a 5 for no good reason. So really, it's the other rules that we have to consider. What is meant by the zeros? Note that all the other rules after rule 1 are all about the zeros. So what we need to determine is for each zero, is it significant? or is it just a placeholder? For example, if we have the number 0 0.052 centimeters, we look at it and we say, well, we know for sure that the 5 and the 2 are both significant. That's our rule 1. So we just have to think about the zeros. Now this 0 was needed to show that it was a small number. You see, there's no way to show how small a number is without writing the decimal and the zero here. It doesn't make the number any more accurate. It's just a placeholder telling us about the magnitude of the number, nothing about its accuracy. Now let's take a look at the first zero here. You've probably noticed that you don't often see numbers that just start with a decimal. For instance like this. In your math and science courses, as well as in modern society in general, we typically write a zero in front of a decimal like this. The reason for this is about making the decimal more noticeable, whether in a sentence with a bunch of periods involved or even in a list. In fact, if you dig into legal guidelines for engineers and pharmacists and scientists and so on, you'll often run into a rule or recommendation to never leave a decimal point naked, that is, out by itself. As you don't want to miss the decimal point and accidentally prescribe, say, 5 milliliters when someone intended to write down 0.5 milliliters but the decimal got smudged. Now that would be a tenfold overdose and suddenly the little error gets really serious. Therefore, it's always good practice to put that preceding zero in. Of course, then, that zero out front of a decimal by itself is never significant, but something like an extra placeholder. So as a result, our number example here has two sig figs. Let's look at another example. This time, 0 0.0520. So, what we already know is that the 5 and the 2 are both significant. So, this 0 is just a placeholder, as we discussed, showing how small the measurement is. And this 0 is just there to help us not miss the decimal. So, we only have to consider this 0 at the end. Now, this one's not a placeholder, as it doesn't help show the number as being any bigger or smaller. Therefore, if the person who wrote this number down didn't have it to show bigger or smaller, there must be some other reason they wrote that number. It must be to indicate accuracy. Therefore, it must be a significant digit. So, this example has three sig figs. 
Now, what if we had a zero in the middle of some significant digits like this? 0 0.0502. Now, this zero right in the middle here isn't there to show magnitude, so it's not a placeholder, as any other digit could have been there, but they wrote a zero. Therefore, it must be part of the accuracy. It must be significant and not a placeholder. So any zero mixed in between other non-zero digits is definitely significant. This example has three sig figs. So really that's the zeros in small numbers. So let's take a look at zeros in the big numbers. Let's say we get the number 52,000 kilograms. The zeros are placeholders in this case. That is, they demonstrate that we're talking about a really big number. Without them, we'd just be talking about 52. With them, we're talking about 52,000. It's a big difference. The only problem with this is, what if the person making the measurement and writing it down truly wanted the zeros to be significant? Maybe they measured the 52,000 to within a few kilograms and wanted to express this level of accuracy. So they came out to be zero, and how do they indicate that these zeros were in fact part of the accuracy and not just placeholders? That's a tough one, and it has been discussed an awful lot. Really, it's the most confusing thing about sig figs, really. It's a real puzzler. Well, when you get a bunch of scientists together, things don't stay unsolved for too long. And the way to solve this, other than writing it down in scientific notation, which, of course, solves all these questions, is we could just show a decimal right here. If all these zeros were significant, this decimal here indicates that. This is the most commonly accepted way of solving this little dilemma. If you don't see a decimal at the end, then you know that all those following zeros are just placeholders. They're letting you know it's a big number. If you see a decimal at the end, then you know that all the preceding zeros are significant. So in this case, without the decimal, we have two sig figs. With the decimal, we would have five sig figs. Now we may be a little redundant here at the end, just to be really clear. Let's just show that if we had 50,200 kilograms, then this zero here in between would be significant. Just like before, it's between two non-zero digits. It's part of the digits that indicate accuracy rather than magnitude. So this example would have three sig figs. Also, if you had 50,200, but you put two zeros at the end here after the decimals, then the zeros off to the right here would also be significant. They were not needed to show magnitude. That is, the size of the number doesn't change whether they're there or not. Therefore, if they were added to the number after the decimal place, they must be there to indicate increased accuracy. Therefore, they are significant. So this one would have seven sig figs. All of the digits are significant. In this tutorial, we learned some of the reasoning behind our sig fig rules just trying to make them easier to remember. Basically, we know that any non-zero digit must be significant. We also know that any zero in between these non-zero digits must also be significant. The rest of it is just about determining when any other zero is either a placeholder, indicating magnitude, or a sig fig indicating accuracy. Now the only one that's a little bit confusing seems to be the case where you have a big number that ends in zeros like this, 2000. We learned that these ending zeros 
are by default considered placeholders, that is, not significant, unless there's a decimal at the end. And with a little thinking, the rest of the rules are pretty easy to remember. Just consider the purpose of those remaining zeros. Are they there for magnitude, or are they there for accuracy?